Welcome back to Man on the Beach here at Mullion Cove. I'm here with Barry. Barry, what does the beach mean to you? Well, it means, means quite a lot. I've um, spent a lifetime here, it's over 50 years now, uh, working out of this harbour. And uh, lots of experiences, good and bad, yes. So here we are at your boat, I think, and um, that's a strange spelling to me of Mullion. Yes, that's the way it would have been spelt uh, back at the uh, turn of the 1900s, the old Cornish way of spelling Mullion. And a lovely name for the boat as well, Flowing Tide. Is there a Cornish connection or an equivalent to that? Well, the reason I, I called it the Flowing Tide was that through my lifetime I've had to wait for the Flowing Tide many, many times, either on sandbanks, I've been grounded or whatever, so I thought it was quite an apt name to call it. And of course the tide is so equivalent to life, isn't it? And, and, and our everyday life and the ups and downs of life, isn't it? And the tide on the beach has got a great metaphorical power, hasn't it? Well, that's correct. You know, in, in, in times I've, uh, I've heard it said my grandfather, and I, uh, probably you're talking about the 1920s, uh, 30s, you know, times pretty hard. And uh, he would say, uh, even, even in the deepest recession, well, boy, he would say the tide never went out as far as it came back in again. Yeah. But he would also add that sometimes it was a long time ebbing. <laughs> and you've got to be patient. You have. That's right. Yeah. Everything comes to you waits. So you've been going out of Mullion for a long time now and working and, and, and it's a place that's very dear to your heart. Yes. How's it changed and how have you adapted to um, the changing circumstances of this beautiful cove? Well, I've, I've um, over the last few years, I've diversified. Uh, you know, it's um, it's getting more difficult to uh, earn a living uh, only and solely from catching crab and lobster and whatever other you diversify into. But I've diversified into taking boat trips out, people, uh, uh, tourists, uh, mackerel fishing trips, scenic trips, uh, seeing the sea life, seals and and sharks and whatever you know off the coast. Yeah, yeah, and I, I do that for uh, uh, in the afternoons after I've um, hauled and uh, baited the pots in the mornings. And how would people find out about that? If would they get in contact with you locally here at the cove, or is there any other way? Well, I, I do advertise uh, a bit. You know, um, I've got uh, uh, signs up here in the cove in all the local hotels and uh, restaurants and uh, so on. Yeah. Are you still able to get any pots out then? Oh well? yes, yeah, I shall be starting uh, quite soon in the next few weeks. I shall be getting uh, uh, a few pots out and um, uh, yeah. I think yeah. a lot of our visitors really like the idea that people are still clinging on and doing the commercial fishing oh. as well as the, the leisure trips. That's right, you know, uh, when the tourists come to the cove to see uh, shellfish and ordinary fish landed here. It uh, it, it it does uh, because it's something they they uh, don't come across in their own way of life, really. Yeah. Okay. Shall we have a look at the cove, Barry? Certainly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Th that's the uh, that's the harbour there as you're looking at it, and with with Mullion Island in the background, or as the old Cornish. Um, uh, name for it was Innes Brunel, with the uh, larger rock there to the the right hand, the Scarven, which means the ear rock. Uh, yeah, the, the harbour was built um, uh, back in 19, uh, 1887, started to build it. My grandfather uh, left school at the age of 12 to start work on it, and his job was to take the chisels from the um, stonemasons up to the blacksmith at the village to be sharpened and bring them back for the uh, uh, stonemasons to dress the stone on site. Uh, it was completed somewhere near eight, 1894 but to a certain extent probably a, a white elephant because uh, Lord Robarts who was the benefactor of building the harbour because he owned uh, half of Mullion um, it uh, and he built it really for, uh, in recompense for the uh, the bad pilchard seasons of the 1870s when I think there was hardly a pilcher landed in, in Mullion Cove. Uh, but uh, the last successful seine was shot in, in 1899 
and so that was the demise then of the uh, pilchard industry. He also was hoping to bring uh, catchers of coal to supply the old peninsula rather than going into Port Leven and then being dragged up uh, with horses and wagons or from Guic. He was it was easier to get it into Mullion but sadly on the second catch they brought in uh, they nearly lost the boat. The weather uh, made poor while they were unloading the uh, the uh, cargo of coal and uh, the captain refused to uh, come into the harbour so the two projects he'd built the harbour for uh, was all over by the turn of the century. We're grateful that they're here now though aren't we? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. It still uh, uh, affords a lot of shelter for the, uh, the two fishing boats that are left, yes. I've really enjoyed talking to you Barry. No problem. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for throwing the light on this, this beautiful place where Sorry. you live. Okay. All the best to you. Okay. Bye. Do, do Guinness. Oh, cheerio then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>